instances of paranormal phenomena have been reported in this desolate place. Events that may reflect the area's tragic past. Welcome back to another Ninja's Podcast, where we talk all things paranormal. I'm Ken James, and this is Jason McIntyre. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Hey, folks. Yeah. <laughs> and if we're going to haunt hell or dwell in the dark, we want to talk about it. And tonight, it's long overdue, but we're doing it. We're bringing you our favorite X-Files episode. Three of our most Three favorite. Three of our most Three favorite. of our favorite, because I feel like there's going to be another there's, episode yeah, of this. Yeah, there is, because there's too many. There's so yeah. many. X-Files... Is one of those uh, series that, like, if you're like ready to binge something and you go in, uh, I did it. I want to say ten years ago for the first time since it first aired, mm, mm. and I binged it all the way through. I had to stop halfway through. Mm-hmm. I had to take a couple months. You're too scared. No, no, no. it's because it's too much. <laughs> too much truth. It's yeah, it was too much truth. Um, it's because it's you know what was it? at the time it was six seasons, mm. uh, like twenty four episodes a season. Each episode's at least forty five minutes. Right. So it's a lot. There's a lot in there, mm-hmm. but, um, but that means there's a lot more to talk about. Oh, for sure. And there's a lot more jelly in those donuts. Hell you know yeah, lots of jelly donuts over here. But yeah. uh, were you more of a fan of like the mythology episodes or the monster of the week episodes? Very good call. All right. So here's the deal. I look the overarching episodes. There was a lot of times where, especially in the later seasons, where they got into certain characters, and I was just like, I don't care. Right. In the beginning, when you kept it with the sm- cigarette smoking man, you kept it with Skinner, and then you kept it with like the overarching. My sister was abducted. Stuff mm-hmm. was really cool. Then they started to get into stuff where it's like, all right, you guys are just like there's like this un- indestructible the black ooze, uh, yeah. <laughs> And there's this alien hitman, like all this kind of stuff that was like, all right. Shout out to Shao Kahn. Right. <laughs> exactly. The dragon, uh-huh. as they call him. Um, but yeah, no, creature feature episodes were always the best. The creature of the week, the monster of the week. That's where. Spoiler the- alert all three of my picks are monster of the week episodes. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, um, I guess, yeah, I guess mine would be too. Yeah. Um, but mine, I, I decided to go with kind of a like different vibe of each. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah. Look, the creature feature monster of the week goes to the week. Those were the ones. Oh, right? and they're awesome because they're unconnected. So if you didn't know anything about the series, you could just jump in and watch this episode. There will yeah. be a little bit of Smoking Man, a little bit of Skinner in yeah, there, right. but you're still gonna be like, oh, okay, that must just be his boss. And then you just right. you're down for the. And monster. I want to shout out because Skinner, Mitch Pelegi is like the unsung hero Excuse of this me. show. Mitch, Shocker, Pelegi. Good call. That is Shocker, yeah, isn't it? Is. Wow. Finger looking yeah, good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's so good in that show, like, and um, there's going to be something in my, my one of my episodes that, that I was saying to Jay earlier when we were on a beer run and mm-hmm. a firewood run, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, so, X-Files, it's so good, there's so much, and Skinner's the man. But, well, something just came across the other Ninja Podcast news yesterday. I have a headline before you get to that one. Oh. Jillian Anderson is aging like a fine wine. Oh. That's it. There was that scene in the season seven when they brought it back where, like, that guy's memory, remember that? Yeah, she's or, like, something about, yeah, say cheese, and it's just like... Yeah. You were like, whoa. I was like, all right. I had that poster, too, back in the day, the Rolling Stone cover, oh. when she's with the, the creature of the Black Lagoon. Yeah. You're like, oh, Scully, oh. Yeah, yeah. Agent Scully. If, yeah, if you, were in my, if you were in my house at that time, 13-year-old, 14-year-old <coughs> me, it was like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Good. Nice. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Anywho... This just came across the other Inch Podcast news desk. It's another haunted headline. Haunted headline. Just in line with X Files, Jay. Mm-hmm. Officials at the Pentagon report suggests an alien mothership. Could be sending UFOs to spy on Earth. Yeah. Well, where else are they coming from? They're not long-range fight. They're they're fighters. They're not long-range. You don't vessels. know. This. You don't. Know I that. do know that. 
Aliens could be coming to Earth and, in fact, may already be in our solar system, according to a new draft report from the Pentagon. The document was published by the director of the Pentagon's All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, or AARO, hmm. Sean Kirkpatrick, and Harvard University's Astronomy Department Chairman Abraham Loeb. So, Sean Kirkpatrick? Yeah. I trust that Irish drunk. Whoa! <laughs> On the day after St. Patty's Day. This is what you're doing? On your mother's birthday. Yeah. <laughs> On your mother's birthday. On the day of your My mother's birthday is On the day of your communion, smoking weed in the garage with your friend. It says... Sorry, we, I derailed yeah, that whole yeah, fucking thing. Yeah, it's fine. Thing. It's fine. But apparently a lot of credible people are saying that... Are also um, drunks. Yeah, are also drunks. It says we may soon see extraterrestrial life visiting Earth via smaller probe-like spaceships. Like Tic Tacs and things that we're already seeing that we're shooting down. All country. right. I, I don't... Yeah. Uh, so, no. Not that sort of probing. <laughs> Think more like smaller explorative vessels. The draft document focuses on the physical constraints of the unidentified aerial phenomenon, or UAPs, as they're so-called now. So, in other words, a spaceship and other foreign celestial objects. Quote, an artificial interstellar object could potentially be a parent craft that releases many small probes during its close passage on Earth, an operational construct not too, dis uh, not too dissimilar from NASA missions, the report reads. These dandelion seeds could be separated from the parent craft by a tidal of gravitational force of the sun or by a maneuvering capability. The AARO established in July of 2022 is a branch of the Pentagon that is responsible for tracking unidentified flying objects in the sky, underwater, or in the air and space, or in a combination of all three of those. After all, who knows what these funky space dudes get up to on these days? I don't know. Here, here's what happened. Uh, Fitzgerald, Fitzpatrick, whatever his name was, got wasted and watched Independence Day. Stop it. Yeah. No. Yeah. No? No. All right. No. There's that... We had that one craft that we saw that was blocking out the one star. I'm just talking about the mothership thing. Yeah, well, there it was just that just sounds one. like Independence Day. Look. Independence Day, Star Fox, star 64, Fox. remember? Yeah. When they took the whole Independence Day crash, remember? Yeah. Remember that scene? That was sick. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. But Pentagon's saying it, man. It's here now. Pentagon says a lot of things. It's true. And it just says the Pentagon. What does that mean? Did the building say it? Could. Okay. You know. What's your fucking deal, man? Because there's only one camera angle from that gas station when it says that it hit the Pentagon. And, you know. And that was the financial department. Exactly. All the, the files, were, yeah, files yeah. were wiped out. You know? the money went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like Fox yeah. Mulder would have been all over that. Oh, yeah. And then Scully would have been like, Mulder. Yeah, like, this is the cra You're crazy. And he's yeah. like... You fucking saw it! Like, like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like, uh, before we get into our episodes, like, a lot of times, too, like, the, the whole, like, you know, Sherlock Holmes, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Watson dynamic, yeah, uh -huh. that whole, like, skeptic mm -hmm. uh, believer part, like, I love how so much of the time uh, it, it's like Mulder, like, holding back, like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. He's like, didn't you just have an alien baby last season? Yeah. Are you out of your fucking mind? Yeah. Like, wise up, toots. Like, yeah. you, you know, You're the you know, reason yeah. why Deep Throat's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the funeral from yeah yeah, uh, yeah right yeah. right so ah, man the X Files Jay mm -hmm. do you remember your first your first uh, like the first time seeing the oh uh, hearing the music uh, like, I remember the commercials when they first started showing before it aired and I and I sat and I watched the first episode um, I was a, I've been a fan since day one um, this came out at the height of now and I should say the height of the paranormal craze yeah I feel like these and the ghost shows informed each other yeah like. Right. You can't. It's almost like a chicken and the egg kind of scenario. Like yes. Which which came first? Yes. A lot more ghost paranormal shows came. Like sightings is a direct uh, byproduct. A, byproduct exactly yeah. of X Files. Mm -hmm. However, I feel like X Files kind of like they they really just they were in this like this stew together and mm -hmm. they just kind of fed off of each other. And um, the magazines, the books. I remember going into you know you, you visit the mall. I would go to the bookstore, look at all mm -hmm. the all the paranormal mm -hmm. books, the alien stuff. You know. And it just, every everything that was coming out at that time took the aesthetic of the X-Files, the opening scene. I feel like the opening scene was the big, mm -hmm. uh, the opening credits, excuse me. Yeah. That whole thing kind of, like, informed it all, because then, like, sightings kind of looks like it. Well, because, uh, yeah, because it has, like, the, it's like the possession. Yeah. Alien abduction. Yep. 
paranormal activity. Yep, and then they even remember when sightings got their second, um, they got their second um, uh, theme song, and it sounded more like the X Files. Yeah. So, because sightings first started out was just like <sighs> sightings, and then there was nothing, and then then they had their original doo -doo 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 -doo. sounds like which one fucking came first? And it's almost like they were like birthed together because do you remember Friday nights on Fox mm -hmm. Channel Five, where here where we live? Um, You'd get X Files, and then it was like four episodes. Uh, you know, it was probably even more. It was like just it was episodes till I passed out of of sightings. Right. And it was like, dude. Yeah. And if I'm if, if I'm not mistaken, I think Thursday nights. Sorry, I just. Could you put on pure moods while you're at it? This was on pure moods. That's how big this was. Yep. Yeah. You had the Return to Innocence. You had. Hi -ya. Hi -ya. And then you had. Like. Yeah. Not a party mix, though. I, but just... <laughs> but it was just this. No, it was just this. It was yeah, just this whole I know, song. I know. And also, uh, Tubular Bells from, um, yeah, from The Exorcist. The Exorcist yeah. that, that CD... First of all, that CD... Alright? I don't think millennials listen to this. Yeah. That... Or Zenny... Zoomers. 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 Yeah, Zoomers. Um, no Gen cats. Z. For real, for real. Yeah. Um, oh, God. <laughs> I mean, we're not bussing. I no, can we're tell not. You. We're not bussing uh, for real. For real. <laughs> um, dude, that CD that that was like that was another thing that you had to have. That was like mm -hmm. that was like part of like the like collection. Like if you were hanging out, like some that was in the rotation. And then um, Thursday nights, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, was Unsolved Mysteries. So like you had this like going into the weekend, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday you would get ran like they I think they did a rerun of X Files or like another one that was not in like they were telling the story right so like let's say they were midway through season three, you'd come on on Saturday they'd have a couple episodes from season one or season right. two, so like it was so popular right. and then what Millennium came after that, the one with um, Lance Henriksen, I'm the other Chris to... Carter show yeah oh man doesn't Look, matter we'll go into yeah. that at some point. That came after, like, there was this whole, like, the, the paranormal thing was really kicking off, and it was awesome, because mm -hmm. I, it spawned this podcast. Right, it did, and we were, <laughs> I remember, um, I'm the youngest of three brothers, so what we were watching was never my choice. <laughs> you know, I had to wait for people to be out of the house, and I'd be like, you know, I'd look around, like, you know, I have the remote, mm. you know, like, but, um... Yeah, we didn't. We, I just I remember. I to this day, I was in the car for some reason. I was the first kid in the car. Mm -hmm. We're going to pick up the brother somewhere else, and my dad had to stop at ATM, and he was like, "Oh, that reminds me. There's a show, X Files," mm -hmm. and he's like, "There's this episode, blah blah,", blah and mm -hmm. coincidentally, my hometown, the mm -hmm. episode, there's a segment where it takes place in Ben Salem, mm -hmm. and that was the first episode. He's like, "We're watching it tonight. It's going to be on," yep. and that was it. Yeah, that yep. was it. Yep, that no, was and fucking it. Yep, and then I also remember there was a, um in the comic store they had an X file. The comic book came out right around the same time, mm -hmm. and the, the comic had Mulder and Scully, yep. and then a picture of one of those gray aliens, which was like right off the cover yep. of Communion. Apparently, we got that whole story wrong, <laughs> right? Communion. <laughs> yeah, apparently. So um, some yeah. jag off on YouTube <laughs> had something to say that we got the facts wrong. The facts wrong on Communion. <laughs> Outer space guy. Okay. Do me a favor. Call Christopher Walken and, and air your grievances to him. Yeah. So. Jag off. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently. No, no, that's all the coverage he gets. That's I'm, it. No, I'm just gonna say. Oh, apparently, okay. <laughs> we haven't made it clear enough that we're just fucking around. Yeah. <laughs> that um, there are things we believe and things we don't, and we we say that most of this is bullshit. Yeah. Right, but we enjoy. We love it, this right? stuff. And once again, this is a perfect episode. We're of two Justin. turkeys based in a paranormal stew. Beautiful, <laughs> and, and and this is the perfect episode to say. What was our pilot episode name? Yeah, yeah. We want to believe exactly, and that's what we're here to do. To talk yeah. about this stuff, and we suss it out. And like you said earlier, it's a headspace cannon, baby. Yeah, we're just get in or get out. Exactly, and that's what if we. If you're do. coming here for facts, whoo! Yeah, boy oh, oh boy, have the doctors up your dosage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Sell crazy yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, right. We're yeah. all stocked up. Here. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> so anywho. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so yeah. So I saw that picture and on the comic book cover, and I was like, oh man, because that would scare me back then. Like, What's mm. the X Files? And my my dad, he's also was oh, so way. Know? <laughs> you wanna, I'll tell you. Exactly. My dad was way into um was way into um 
the paranormal stuff with me too. We used to watch uh, Unsolved Mysteries together. Um, I remember used to like sneak into it, like into the room. He'd be like watching the X Files. Supposed to be doing my homework. I'm like, oh, Unsolved Mysteries on. My dad like, yeah. He, did you do your homework? I'm like, I didn't finish. He's like, he's like, fuck he's like, fuck, 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 yeah. fuck yeah. homework. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my mom would be coming and she's like, did you finish your homework? He you finished. He's good. Yeah. He's good. He's like, your dad's just like writing whatever. Like he's like pie. No. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah I was young. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and then X Files came on and we and. Um, he didn't stick with the show because I think he liked more of like the like the bang pow of yeah. like the the sightings and things where it's like easily digestible. Yeah. Like, like it just wasn't his jam. Like the overarching thing. Like, he Here watched, is a picture of a ghost. Yeah, yeah like yeah. he was more into that, and yeah. that was fun for him. But I stuck with X Files and the kids in school that I was friends with. We all stuck with X Files, and like it was just like you know every every Monday morning or whatever it was, we we're like, oh dude, you know, fucking uh. yeah. And it just it was just good shit. But yeah. I also went off the deep end with it and was like you know. Just like you, mm-hmm. reading the books all the time. I always had some kind of paranormal mm-hmm. thing in my book mm-hmm. bag, and mm-hmm. you know. And that's the thing, yeah. Like as a young man, the youngest of three brothers, you're the oldest of three brothers. I am the correct? oldest of three brothers, yeah. so I did what the fuck I wanted. Yeah, exactly. So I'm the, <laughs> my both. You know, my oldest brother, he's you know, Chris is super into all this stuff as well as my mother and my dad. But uh, in the same breath, you know, uh, it finally caught on, and then I eventually kind of informed the the digest. Yeah, how did I miss that? I'm not into basketball, I guess. No, I'm not. But I, I kind of later on would uh, inform the, the the things that we digested because I became the salesman, right? You know, the little brother has to become the salesman. You know, he has to come in and be like the youngest, like, look, let me explain to you why this is interesting and why we're watching it. Mm. And if you could spin the yarn and then get them going, like, oh fuck, we need to tune in. My younger brothers didn't give a shit, so they didn't watch it at all. Right. Well, there so, you go. Yeah. I'm saying I'm the youngest. I had to I had to sell upward. You know. I gotcha. And then we watched every episode of Ghost Hunters. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, no, so yeah, it was it was awesome. And um, there are certain episodes that like you'll be in a conversation, you're talking, all of a sudden you get a flash of like a baby hopping off a guy's body because I'm like, oh, X Files. You yeah. know, you're like mm-hmm. it just all these little things. Yep. And, and so many shows have been informed by the X Files. And yeah. Yep. And I think we we definitely can't. I you know we wanted to do this episode for a while, just didn't get to it, but. I think it's just one of those things whenever you talk to somebody that's into this kind of stuff, it's like, oh, what's... You get on the topic, oh, what's your favorite episode? And you know what's kind of funny? I feel like it's always a different answer. Sure. Like, my three, I almost never have someone say that, that that's theirs. Like, I almost, like, or you'll get someone like, oh, it's this, and they're all alien episodes. Yeah. Like, okay, I get that. They're into the alien stuff. Or, like, it's uh, that weird-ass Christmas episode. Or, like... That's a good one, but... We ha- we're, we're disqualifying one here that has become everyone's favorite because it's edgy. Home. Home is the one with the uh, Hills Have Eyes rednecks mm-hmm. who have their moms strapped to the bed yeah, that, that was one... banned from television. Yeah, that's The only reason people say that that's their favorite is because... The Edge. Yeah. Edge Lords. Yeah, Edge Lords. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. We're disqualifying that. That's not coming anywhere near this. We're going off merit of the episode, our enjoyment, and just overall um, the feelies it gives us. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to kick it off, my friend? Absolutely. All right. Guys, this is it. Is it? This is the one I was talking about. This, this is, is it. This fr- is definitely the one. This is it. Ah, no. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is season one, episode six. This is my introduction to X Files. This is the. This is my intro. This was. Uh, dude, uh, what year was it? This was ninety three. Yeah. So I'm six. I'm six years old. I'm in the back of my dad's. You know. Car or whatever it was you're at the watching X Files in the back of his no, car. No, no, I hear he goes. There's oh, there's something I saw. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, it's a show. He's like the a ghost is you know at an ATM. But that, that, that was kind of like the description. Yeah. Right? Oh no. Yep. And it's like protecting this woman. We're gonna watch it tonight. Mm-hmm. That was like the thing. And I was like, and as a kid, mm-hmm. I was scared of everything. Ghosts, mm-hmm. everything scared. You're, still, you're still, still scared of everything. I'm still a scared. You're still I'm, a scared. I'm still a scared of the dark. You're still <laughs> scared. But um. Ken James, big brave dog. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, we watch it, and my life was changed forever from that moment forward. But um, it's episode six of season one. It's called Shadows. Now, the plot is, two muggers are found dead in the back alley of Philadelphia after robbing a woman, Lauren Kite, at an automated teller machine, or an ATM. (laughs) FBI agent Fox Mulder and Dana Scully investigate the case when called in by a pair of agents from an unknown agency. The bodies are found to have an electrical charge, and their throats have been crushed from the inside. So good. Meanwhile, Lauren sees her boss, Robert Dorland, 
and resigns due to her grief over yeah over the death of Dorland's partner Howard Graves. Beautiful mm-hmm. name. Who supposedly committed suicide weeks before. Mulder and Scully determine that one of the dead muggers belonged to an Islamic terrorist group, and uh, they de- they determine that after you know reviewing the ATM footage where Agent Scully goes age fifty eight from from Ben Salem, and I was like, oh! you know, like you know, it was like everybody get up, it's on the jam, you know, like you, you go nuts, you know. Because I see there's a residual of that energy uh, left uh, over. Yeah, oh, dude. Oh, it's so good. It's still so good. <laughs> it's still so good. I don't even need to read the rest of the plot because I know the rest of it. Basically, there's this, you know, it's a, 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 a the this guy who has ties to this group. He's basically washing money uh, through this, this terrorist group. And he has the boss finds out, Graves, mm-hmm. um, and he gets killed. He gets suicided, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. And the other boss that, of the secretary... You know, she explained. She goes, oh, Art, she's like, I told him I was closer than I was to my dad. He, you know, we late nights you're working with these people. That's all you have some time, which is a pretty big deal when you're in the working community. Um, you know, in, in the the whole like office setting, yeah. You know, a lot of times you're closer to these people than you are some of your best friends. You're with them every day. And you tell them everything. That's but, what people who have no friends say. Is it? I think so. Right. I, I never liked anyone I worked with. No. Oh. Sorry, whoever, whatever you people are. Where are you? <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway. So anyway. So basically, the ghost of her former boss and best friend mm-hmm. starts protecting her from all these uh, yeah. people trying to kill him. Uh, it all culminates in a scene because Mulder, of course, mm-hmm. is like, I think this is telekinesis. Mm-hmm. He's like, I think she's, you know, doing this. Yeah. And Scully's like, Fox. Mulder. Yeah, she's like, Fox. Like, no, that's not real. And, you know, she's like, he's the accomplice. He faked his death. Yeah. And then he's like, no, Scully, that's not how it goes. Yeah, yeah. He's like, "Mm." and she's like, you know, he's like, you know how hard it is to fake your own death? You know, so he's going off, like, the premise of, like, Mm -hmm. that's really hard to do. And she's like, well, ghosts don't exist. And it all culminates to where two muggers break in to her, to her Ben Salem home, you know, and the ghost fucking kills the shit out of both of them. Holds them up. Mulder walks in at the end of the one death and he's like... Yeah. He was just standing there as like... like you know, yeah. uh-huh. The throat's getting crushed yeah. by a ghost. And then what, what do they do? They have to cleanse it. Mm-hmm. Cleanse the whole thing mm-hmm. and hope that it's like, yeah, you don't have to protect this chick anymore. No, they bring out the uh, the sage. Yes, they <laughs> sage the whole place. <laughs> and that's how, it, that's how it, it works. But no, basically they end up... Uh, the chick, uh, the, 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 the secretary, she ends up having to, like, um, exposing, you know, and going the, the, the legal way, mm-hmm. you know, exposing the corruption mm-hmm. and getting that person put away and arrested for the murder of her boss. Okay. And uh, it ends with, like, this super sweet, like, you know, she's working in a new city <sighs> at a new place and, like, uh, the boss is kind of being, like, a little bitchy to her and things are, like, Whoa, like it's about to happen again. Mm-hmm. And she's kind of like, you know... It's okay. The, the boss kind of like, oh, we get these tremors here every once in a while, and it was like, Whew. yeah, you know. So Graves is still out there. You yeah. know, he's ready to, to throw down, but he also has to kind of pump the brakes. You know, he's like, I'm not in B town anymore. You know, I'm not in Philly anymore. I can't be, I can't be just killing folks left and right. You can if you're here in Philly. Yeah, he's not in Ben Salem anymore. So he's like, yeah, right. he's like the police force out here. They don't, they don't mess about. No, a boot, a boot. So that was my first episode with Shadows. Um, and you were hooked at... That was it, man. You that were was it. hooked. Yeah. And it was just... There was so much, and I'm I, sorry if I wouldn't, like, kind of... No, you're crazy. It's fine. Yeah, I'm crazy, and I got a little tizzy there, because it's, it's just... <laughs> it was, like... It was crazy. I couldn't believe it. I was, like, you know, like... Come and say, oh, no, yeah. Six years old. Oh, Represent. Represent what? Mm-hmm. Space Jam played, apparently. I went nuts. I love it. Dude, I thought... I fucking love it. Yeah. Well, for my first pick... Um, season one, episode twenty. Mm. All right. Mm-hmm. This episode, darkness falls. Mm. This episode scared the shit out of me. And let me scare the that. tits off right off your body. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm titless to this yeah. day. To this day. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, this is the one with the where you have the crew of loggers. You know, it opens up and they get killed by 
bugs? Remember? All right. I believe so, yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll run through the plot. So they're up in the Olympic National Forest in Washington State, and a group of loggers flee through the woods trying to escape from an unseen force. You're like, oh, what is it? Is it, uh, you know, Bigfoot, um, yeah. a dragon, <laughs> uh, your mother? I don't know. Yeah, it could be my mom. Yeah, not your mother, just it in It could general. be my mom. It could. I mean, if she's, you know. If she's on. If you're. It's true. If you're messing around with the couch. That's true. Yeah. Don't mess with the furniture. Or the TV. Yeah. I remember that one time you guys were fucking about and like you hit the TV and your oh, mom yeah. almost lost her oh, fucking yeah. mind. And all the loggers right out of town. <laughs> yes. They're they were little... like, no. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, so they're eventually killed by a large swarm of these small glowing green insects. After effects, too. So these guys yeah. are like swatting yeah. at nothing. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Makes this cool noise. <laughs> mm -hmm. So cut to FBI headquarters and the G Fox Mulder in his office. And he's talking to uh, Dana Scully, and he's got this projector. He got the projector on the wall. Total like movie, like sitting in a dark room. I can't just show her pictures. Yeah. Puts on the projector, and uh, Mulder's showing Scully the, the picture of these missing loggers. And there's 30 of them that just go missing. So, um, and that another group of loggers disappeared in this same forest in 1934. Uh, so he's like, "You want to go on an adventure?" Yeah. And she's like, "Yeah." Just to prove you wrong, though. Yes, because she's like, Mulder, it's not paranormal. Yeah. Even though, what are we, episode 20? I've seen yeah. like 30 fucking things already. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they head to the forest where they meet. Uh, there's the <laughs> the G, the U.S. Forest Service dude. He's just like way too good looking to be in that role, too. He's just yeah. like, he like has the one leg up and like the, the light hits him or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's raining, actually. Um, <laughs> the water hits his bulge in his right. pants. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. And, then, and then there's another dude there uh, who's like the head of security for the logging company. And they're like, okay, you know, we got to get out to this place. It's a four-hour drive. And then like, I think that's the first thing that struck me. I was like, 30 in the woods and it's another four hours of driving? Yeah. I was like, holy shit. So they're driving along and they hit um, these these. Uh, caltrops on the ground and mm -hmm. like pops their tires and left by eco terrorists. Gotta watch out for them. Um, They're about. Yeah, so they have to walk the rest of the way. I don't know how far because they don't say. Um, <laughs> they're not specific. They're not non specific. Uh, so uh, <laughs> so they, <laughs> they get to the campsite and Mulder and Scull Scully find the cabins are abandoned. Like, mm. literally, like food is half eaten. Yeah. Like, you know, typical, like, paranormal, like, Mary Celeste yeah. style. Like, yeah. oh, the food was still warm. Yeah. Uh, the candles were still lit. Yeah. Nobody flushed the toilet. Like, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and Scully's like, Mulder. Yeah, Mulder, this is obviously not paranormal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and then all the communication equipment is destroyed. Mm, mm. The thing. Wilford Brimley's out there. Just or like. or, The Shining. Actually, there's an episode that Touché. I want. I was gonna do. I think it's. Is it Fire? The episode where it's it's the thing. It's the exact. Uh, right. I forget which. Anyway, I forget the name of it. Um, searching the forest, they find a corpse, which is, is the best part. They, they go up, they, they find, there. it's a large cocoon that's up on this part of the tree. And they're like, what is that? And then you're like, oh, I know what this yeah, is. Yeah, we're like, uh, everyone that's watching yeah, knows. So yeah. they pull it down and they see fingers. And they open it up and there's, there's a desiccated corpse in there. And everyone watching is just like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, Mulder, this is obviously... He, he killed himself. Yeah, he killed Mulder. himself and put a big cotton ball on himself. <laughs> and he's like... Yeah. Uh, that's why. See, that's why you needed David Duchovny yeah. for that role because yeah. his like, like that's that was his whole thing. So while repairing one of the generators, uh, the Humphreys, the guy who's in charge of security, uh, catches the eco terrorist named Doug Spinney, not to be confused with Doug Funny. He tells the group that there's a deadly swarm of insects in the forest. And they must avoid the darkness to stay alive. All right, so these little bastards, they only activate when the sun goes down. You know what I'm saying? Or other things. But no, yeah, so they only activate at night. Right. Super scary. All right. You were just like yelling out there, so the mic is like fucking. The next morning, they find an old growth tree cut down with an unexplained band of green contained within its growth rings. Mm. 
Yeah. Mm. Spinney su- uh, suspects that an organism that was dormant in the tree for centuries was disturbed when the tree was illegally cut down. Uh, Humphreys hikes down to Moore's truck, but is killed by the swarm at nightfall. This is awesome because the guy goes in. He's like, he's like, all right, well, you know. I'm going to, you know... He's like, fuck nature! (laughs) Yeah. Goes down to the truck, tries his best to get it started, (coughs) runs into a rock. It's the stupidest thing you've ever seen. And then the rock rolls, Mm -hmm. so he can't get his door open, and they all come out, and like... Mm -hmm. "Ah!" It's great, and we love it. Yeah. Um, You don't need to be that close to the mic. I'm sorry. Um... In the cabin, everyone else is kept safe by the light, as, as we've established. Uh, the next morning, uh, Spinney convinces Mulder to let him take his colleagues with gasoline so he can return and burn the whole forest down. <laughs> well, he's going to come back with a jeep and save them all. Scully and... Um, they're not. They're not a fan that Mulder let this happen. She's like, she's like, what? And the other dude, the security guy, he's like, the fuck are you doing, man? Like, he, that dude's an eco terrorist, man. Yeah. Um, Mulder he, gets it though. That's yeah, he's thing. not going to come back. But he was like, um, they had an understanding. Yeah. Like he was like, he's like, so Agent Scully, is she like, and Mulder's like, she's mine in time. Yeah. <laughs> Get away. He's like, yeah. He's like, stay away for now. He's yeah. like, people that I make eye contact with can't. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's in the subtext, folks. Yeah. So yeah. the night passes with only a single light bulb lighting the cabin, um, and the, the, it's cool because the generator cuts out just as morning arrives, which mm-hmm. is great. Um, and I thought it was really cool. The thing that scared me about this was like, it's like, why don't you just hike out? Wait till the morning and hike out. But it's they're so far in that even if they hike all the way from like sunrise to sunset, they're still not going to be out. Yeah. And that, that was like a terrifying concept to me. Because it's like, oh, the woods. You know, yeah. you just walk in. You just walk in. No idea. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so they hike down to the truck. It's the uh, scare, uh, with the, are you afraid of the dark? How far can you walk into the woods? Exactly. Halfway. Half- remember? Yes. Remember that? Wow. Do you remember that? That's, uh, didn't we do any scary stories? No, no didn't no. we do a, a... We didn't do are you afraid of the dark? We didn't? No, we yeah, should. We, we, we should. I'm cold. Mm-hmm. Um, so they hike down to the truck next morning, and they find that it has the busted tire, and then... Um, Dude, that tire's busted. Yeah, bro. it is. And then inside the vehicle, Humphreys, the security guy, is cocooned in there, but he's like, ah, against the wall, and it's, you could tell it's him with makeup on, and, like, he moves a little bit, like, it's like, <laughs> ah, you fucker. It's just, but it's, it's now watching it, it's just, it just warms my heart, because <laughs> yeah. it's not CGI. Yeah, well, the thing is, you go back, and, like, here are the things that are the, the, the things that keep that all together... There's four actors. Mulder, Scully, mm-hmm. Bitch Plaguey, Cigarette Smoking Man. They're the only ones that had credibility. Oh, yeah. You don't even need anything else. No. Just them doing it. Yeah. You have the little kids sure. are horrible acting, batting nuts and balls around. Mm-hmm. And it's... <laughs> The rest of them are just, they're just, they just keep it together. It's so, their characters are so good, it doesn't even matter. It's true. Um, <laughs> so then, uh, they're like, what are we gonna do now? And then just then, the dude, eco-terrorist, comes around the corner, yeah. bam, he's got the Jeep. But like a, like a, like a jackass, he's fucking driving along, you're driving along, you're driving dude. Driving along, and then he along. runs over some of his own caltrops that he fucking put on the road. Ah, oh, fuck. And just at that moment, <laughs> dude, it's so funny. The bugs start to swarm. It goes in. He they start going around the, the 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 one dude's face, and he runs out into the woods. So dead. Why yeah. why don't you just stay in the headlights? Like, and then it, it swarms in. And they all start getting like fucked up, and the gre- the screen goes green. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. It's it's very weird. And then <laughs> cut to it's like you know, um, it was like a quarantine facility somewhere out in yeah. Washington, and they're all in this like nondescript like um, hospital room. They're all bandaged up. Scully's looking pretty bad. The other dude, the ranger guy, he's looking pretty bad. There's something very Resident Evil about mm. this uh, this scene. Uh, you know, like they open it, yeah. these things open. They bring this nondescript fluid out. It's like, what's going on yeah. in there? Is that the T virus? Yeah, um, probably. <laughs> one dude is probably Wesker. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just played Resident Evil like back to back. That's fine. Um, uh, if they're a listener of the show, they probably have to. They, they probably have to. Um, so one of the scientists that's there, so so Mulder's actually up and going already because he's Mulder. Yeah. Um, you know, he has tiger blood or whatever they say. Alien blood. Dude. What? We'll get into Mulder. We'll get into Mulder. <laughs> uh, so one of the scientists tells Mulder that the forest is being bombarded with pesticides and controlled fire in the hopes of eradicating the insects. And then Mulder asks the scientist what will happen if the efforts fail. And then the dude turns like robot and he's like, 
that is not an option. Anytime there's a government dude, and it always talks like that. Mm -hmm. That is not an option, mm -hmm. Agent Mulder. Yeah. And then just turns and walks yeah. away. <laughs> and Mulder's always just like, oh. yeah, he's like, oh. and then the written by Chris Carter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's dude, it's it's such a good episode because it's like. It has your little, like, he gets in trouble with Skinner in the beginning, yeah. and then, like, you know, um, but it just, it's classic X-Files, and I love that, once again, we were talking before, it's that, um, that creature feature, you know, Monster of the Week kind of thing, mm -hmm. where it's like, it's awesome, but it's not, you know, it's not tied to the first two episodes before, yeah. and then, like, yeah. they, they leave you on a cliffhanger, like, it's just, boom, here's the monster -y thing, we kind of bring it to a kind of conclusion, we get out, but it's... You know, they got that 42 minutes to make it right. happen and get in and get out. And it's, um, I love it. Yeah, I, and that's that's one thing that kind of, like, for all its faults, X-Files, you know, did a great job of doing the overarching... What's that? It has no faults. Okay. You saw the movies. So... I'm talking about the TV show. Okay. What movies? The, even the TV show. Like, the, there was a lot of parts, too, in the overarching story. I'm kind of like, eh, like I said, the unstoppable alien hitman. But, like, there's certain parts where I'm just like, uh, but it always found a way to bring you back. And it always found a way to, like, really, you know, <laughs> really uh, get get you back in with a good old-fashioned, good old fashioned, oh, what the hell is that, you know? Not in the movie you're watching. Oh, that's you that's know. Dick Warlock. Yeah. He right. played Michael Myers in part two, watching uh, Season of the Witch. Yeah, season, yeah, yeah. Halloween 3 is on, on Imagine behind, right. going through life with a name Dick Warlock. Fucking awesome! I could tell you that I would I'd be in a better station of life than I am now if that was. Whatever name. he drives, I imagine it's like a hot rod or a Trans Am. It has to spit fire from the, you know, from the engine and the front. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah. plays with the front too. Sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. We're just having our antics. We 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 did our last episode was a remote episode. Mm -hmm. You can't put us back in the same room. The first one always back in the same room. We're off. We're off on, you know, yeah, we're batting things around. We're getting abducted. <laughs> it's how it works. But, okay, so... Ken, if I, wa if I was going to get abducted, it'd be with you. Oh, dude. And you know what? Uh, hopefully they abduct Chuck Rack again at the same time, and we could just beat the shit out Seriously, of Chuck Rack. Seriously, we should just kill him. If we're abducted, right? No, is he still alive? Chuck Rack? Yeah. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. We should fucking kill that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Other dangerous podcasts is recorded for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> Anything that was said in here in coincidence. You hear me, Chuck like, Rack? <laughs> Jay, Jay's losing it. Jay's off the fucking. He's off the reservation, gang. Something must have went squirrely with that guy when they turned his rib cage upside yeah, down yeah. or whatever. Yep, and banged his head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to X Files. You know what? Let me address that real quick. <laughs> so we've. Uh, for for everyone that's another Nature's podcast fan, and uh, that is, we took we have take, fans. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, Taking us to yeah, that has followed us to learning Lovecraft journey. I've uh, the other podcast I've heard. You know, you guys are different on the other one. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, no fucking shit. That was the intent. Yeah, woo, man. If you if we were <laughs> like this when it comes to something literary and a respected work, uh, oh man. Don't worry, they don't respect us over there anyway. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> They're like, oh, these guys are cute. Especially me. They're like that. This week they called for the death of a UFO abduction yeah, uh, yeah, victim. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, I didn't. You did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Come at me, Chuck Rack. What are you, like 80 now? Yeah, you hear that, Chuck Rack? Yeah. Jay's coming for you. Yeah, and, if, yeah, and you better come heavy. Yeah. Come correct, not at all, motherfucker. All right, so my, <laughs> my next episode, uh, it's called Pusher. It's uh, the seventeenth episode of third season, so the season three, episode seventeen. Now, this one I liked a lot. Uh, it was very different than the other ones, um, and it involved some of our favorite stuff with uh, Japanese uh, warrior culture. Mem remember that? Do you remember that? Uh, yeah. Sorry, okay. I'm just killing Chuck Rack. Yeah, I, right I saw you. Your eyes were like glazed over, yeah. and you're sorry. Yeah. So this episode. Um, <clears throat> Robert Patrick Modell uh, walks through a supermarket buying a large supply of energy drinks. Before he can leave, Modell is surrounded and arrested by FBI agents led by Frank Burst. While being escorted away in a police car, he repeatedly talks about the color Cerulean Blue. Uh, I'm sorry, Cerulean, Cerulean Blue. Blue. That's one of uh, Bob Ross's favorites. Uh, repeatedly stating, Cerulean Blue is a gentle breeze. 
Modell's talking seemingly causes the driver to not see an approaching semi-truck of, of that color causing a collision. Modell escapes after the driver unlocks his handcuff before dying. And that, I love that in the interview when they're talking, like the, the leading uh, uh, police guy there, he's like, um, he's like, yeah, with his l dying breath, with his like brain bashed in, mm. he crawls over to Modell mm. and unlocks his handcuffs. And they're like, did he know him? Like what? They're like, he was dying. No. Mm -hmm. But uh, Burst, the only surviving uh, agent of the crash, tells Fox Mulder and Dana Scully about the pursuit of Modell's nickname, Pusher, who has committed a series of contract killings over the past two years, making the act appear to be suicide. Mulder spots the word Ronin written at the crime scene and tracks down Modell's classified advertisement in a mercenary magazine. I love that scene, because he flips the thing, and he goes, he goes Ronin, and he explains him what it is, and then he uh, She's like, well, what are you trying to tell us here? He goes, I can tell you what magazines are on the back of his toilet. And he drops the American Ronin magazine down, and it's like a woman with like an American flag, it's like bandana. Swoo. It's so good. Um. <laughs> uh, so Mulder believes that Modell has a psychic ability to push people into do his will. Using the phone number in the ad, the agent tracks down Modell to a golf course in Falls Church, Virginia, where he makes a SWAT lieutenant pour gasoline on himself and then sets himself on fire. Mulder finds Modell exhausted in a car nearby arresting him. And if you see that that scene, he's sitting there, he's like, <sighs> and like Mulder's up on him, like looking at him like, Jesus. And he's like, mm -hmm. I bet you $5 I walk. You know, he says that when he's like doing that, and Mulder's like, all right, motherfucker, and like <laughs> arrests him. So agent, uh, agents raid uh, Modell's apartment, but find it empty. They find cans of uh, protein drinks <clears throat> in the refrigerator and uh, medicine for epilepsy. Mulder suspect, uh, suspects that a brain tumor has given Modell uh, his psychic kinetic ability, but that using his power is physically exhausting, forcing him to consistently consume energy drinks. <laughs> Mulder believes that he is dying and wants to go out in a blaze of glory. Modell uh, makes a taunting phone call to Agent Burst and calls him to have a fatal heart attack while they're trying to trace him. And he's like, he's talking about his health. He's like, you're a little big there, buddy. He's like, you know... He's like, I, I bet you drink and you smoke. He's like, I bet there's big yellow slips of fat going through. Like, he saw like the the plaque yeah, going through yeah, his veins, yeah, yeah. and you see the guy like starting to like. Uh. Uh, so the agents track him down to the hospital where he's been uh, compelled, or he's compelled a guard to shoot an MRI technician and kill himself. Mulder ventures inside the hospital to capture Modell. Um, I'm sorry, but it's captured uh, captures Modell. So before this though, there's a scene that I was telling you about. Um, <laughs> Modell runs into Skinner mm -hmm. and it's like the only clip of Skinner in this episode and by this point we know about Skinner oh, yeah. and we know like all about like he's a hard ass but he's always like kind of like just fucking do it like you know he's kind of like just <laughs> like that's his whole thing like <laughs> just all, but also always threatens to close the X-Files oh yeah yeah <laughs> so like this guy Modell is breaking in to get into the FBI and find out their files, what they're working on. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's discovered by Skinner, who's like, "What are you? Who are you? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing in here? What do you? What do you think's going on?" And he's trying to do the shit. He's trying to do his like shit to Skinner. Yeah. yeah. And Skinner's just like seemingly unaffected. Yeah. And they don't explain it like if if Skinner has some kind of like mental ability that he can like you know. He's shocker. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. But in the X Files world. They don't, like, explain. Skinner's just like, he already has a headache, you know? Yeah. And he's just like, why are you here? Who are you? What are you doing? What are you looking for? Yeah. And and, and he's trying to, like, get into Skinner's head. And Skinner's yeah. just like, oh, I don't have time for this bullshit. Like, and he's yeah. about to arrest him. And he has him, like, cuffed up. And then he, Skinner see, or he sees Skinner's, like, assistant. Mm. Oh, he's like, oh, you're going to get me out of this. He's like, she's the one, he's the one that beat you. He's your abusive boyfriend. Mm. And she like pepper sprays him. And she's like apologizing to Skinner. And Skinner once again is just like rubbing his temples. Like, Hold on oh. a second. Did we just, did we just confirm that Skinner is Psyduck? Could be. Same shape head. Both have a headache. True. Both it's are true. very angry for no reason. It's the headache. I'd be angry if I always had a headache. It's true. But it was, it's a great scene. Showing just what kind of man Skinner is. Oh yeah, he's not he's not no, up for this nonsense. Yeah, no bullshit. Like, you know, whatever. You know why they did it? I'll tell you why they did it. Because if 
he came, if he became like influenced by that psychic paranormal stuff, he'd be a believer. Right. And then his his you know his, stick is his, gone. Yeah, yeah, he wouldn't he wouldn't be effective as that character. And anymore. he but he has to also have a stronger resolve. Yeah. To, than any of them because like you know he has run run ins. Yeah. There's a couple episodes where he's like, yeah, like, <laughs> it's like why are they showing him with his shirt off? Yeah, it's because like it's Skinner, dude. Like yeah. he's 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 a physical and a mental specimen. Horace Pinker. Shocker. I know. I know who Horace Pinker is. That movie, that movie messed me up as a kid. I think we should just do an episode on Shocker. Shocker. It's a great movie. You just want to talk about it now. Wes Craven's Shocker. You don't even want to do the X-Files episode. Yeah, I'm flipping the tail now. Yeah, Yeah, so, (laughs) 1990. New Line Cinema released. (laughs) Director of, later on, Smoking Aces, main actor in this movie. But, um, no, so anyway. So, okay, after that scene, finally, uh, he's held up in a hospital, and, uh, uh, Pusher as is as up and sc- and uh, Mulder's like I'm going in. Mm-hmm. Mulder's like nah. He's like I know because after the after the court case when he gets off, yeah, he walks up to him and he's like I believe you owe me five dollars, hmm. and he pulls out the five bucks and he goes your shoes untied, and he looks down, and Mulder goes, now how do you do it? You know he's like I made you look now how do you do it? Like because he knows he's got yeah. something going on, and it's one of those cool things that Mulder does because he's a bad motherfucker. Yep, he's like the. The John Wick of the paranormal. No, no, that wasn't. Nah. Well, who who will we say Mulder is? He's the. He's the Fox Mulder. Anyway. No, he's the Sherlock Holmes of the paranormal. Yeah, but isn't sure. Okay, okay, yeah, right, right. Now there's no paranormal. It, it, it always turns. It's like sc- it always turns out to be not you're paranormal. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But anyway, so Scully, after Mulder goes in, <clears> to you know <throat> confront, mm-hmm. Pusher. Because he's a bad motherfucker. Yep. Scully finds the two sitting at a table with the dead guard's revolver. Mm-hmm. Murnell forces Mulder to play Russian roulette with him. Despite Scully's pleading, Molly pu- Mo- uh, Molly. Mulder pulls the trigger first at Modell and then himself, the hammer falling on an empty chamber both times. Modell then makes him aim the gun at Scully. Uh, at the last instant, Scully sees a fire alarm in the mirror and pulls it, breaking Modell's concentration. Mulder instantly switches his aim to Modell and pulls the trigger. The bullet is fired, and Modell is severely wounded. Mm. Later, Mulder and Scully visit Modell in the hospital, where he's lying in a coma from which Scully predicts he will not awaken before his brain tumor kills him. Mulder surprises her by revealing that Modell's brain tumor was operable all the time, or all the while, but he refused to have it removed, even as his health deteriorated. Scully asks why, and Mulder repeats her earlier assessment of Modell. That he was always a little man, and his physical abilities made him feel big. Or psychic abilities made him feel big. Hmm. So it was like he could have had the brain tumor removed, and they they tracked down like the medicine that he was taking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're like, oh, he's fighting his cancer and all this stuff. And they find out he could have it removed all along. Yeah. But it was like John Travolta and Phenomenon, but inoperable. Why did you bring that movie up? I don't know, why they, did you say that name? Just, Martha. Save Martha. But no, yeah, so I loved that episode. It was cool. Um, and you get that Russian Roulette episode where, like, you get Mulder walking into basically, like, the quote-unquote burning building, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's Mulder walking face, yeah. you know, just, I'm <clears throat> going in to face this because he's so mad he can't figure it out, right? right? Yep. You know, he's like, what is it? What is that little thing that he yeah. he can do that we can? Yeah. Hey, man, Mulder's on a journey. He was. <laughs> he still is. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's out there. All right. So my next pick, also from season one. Whoa. Episode three. Yeah. Squeeze. Mm. All right. This episode is amazing. First, I'm, I'm going to say only because. Not only because. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> it is. It is amazing because of the actor they chose. So you have the character of Tombs in this, played by um, what's his what's his freak's name? And the, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. he, he's a freak. I'm gonna yeah, tell you why. The reoccurring lot. yes. Um, uh, is it Glenn? Uh, no. Um, give me a second. No, a, and this guy, he's been. Um, they used him in CSI to play psychos. Doug Hutchinson. Yeah, they used he's him. He's in play the Green Mile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He plays um, Percy Wetmore. Yeah, but he, they use him to play psychos in a lot of shit. Because he has that look, and yeah. then you find out in real life. He's fucked up. Yeah. He married a 16-year-old. Yeah. A couple years ago. Sure. And now he travels the country with an emotional support goat. 
Look hey, it up. I'm not making it I up. I know you're not. I'm just saying. Hmm? So it's let's Hollywood, baby. Yeah, that's what it is. So let's let's paint the picture here, right? A news report shows a victim being pulled away on a stretcher. All right. It is revealed that a serial killer, having murdered over 30 people, <laughs> is on the loose in a Los Angeles suburb. <laughs> a television repairman with a pronounced limp named Horace Pinker. Oh, I'm reading the wrong thing. I'm gonna, need you, I'm gonna need you to take a five. Okay. Take a five. Mm-hmm. We're gonna cut recording. You're gonna come back. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> In Baltimore, business George Usher arrives at his office building. He is watched from a storm drain. It's the yellow eyes. Yeah. I love it. Yep. Uh, by someone who then infiltrates the building by climbing through the elevator shaft into the ventilation system, kills Usher, and removes his liver. Yeah. And it's so creepy the way that they shoot it, too. I, 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 I remember watching this the first time. I was like, ew. And he can stretch. <laughs> and he can stretch. Yeah, it's weird. Um, so, Usher's murder, the latest of three, is assigned to careerist FBI agent Tom Colton, and it's played by Donald Logue. He's in Blade. Uh, Which guy in Blade? The, the guy who gets his hand cut off. Oh my god! Yeah, he's he's like young, clean shaven. Yeah, uh, uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he was in like uh, just like heaven. He's in. He's such a weird. They throw him in like weird roles a lot. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. He was in. He was in like one of the seasons of What We Do in the Shadows, even though he wasn't a vampire. Was so he? he? he yeah, he, he's like I pretend to be a vampire. Okay, it's, it's so ridiculous. Um, and so he turns to his buddy Dana Scully because he can't figure it out. Colton is baffled by the lack, the lack of entry points at the crime scenes and by the apparent remover, removal of the livers with bare hands. Like bare hands or bare? Like, he puts on these gloves that look like bare bear, hands, oh, yeah. and then he just gets them out. Are you fucking with me right now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. We have derailed. We have. We have derailed. We have. Leave this in. Uh, so Mulder notes their similarity to earlier murder sprees from 1933 mm-hmm. and 1963. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At the scene, mm-hmm. he notices an elongated fingerprints on the air vent. It's like, whoa, these fingerprints are way too long than yeah. normal fingerprints. He's like, Reed Richards? They're like, he's not real. They're like, yeah, we're yeah. not real. Yeah. It's weird. Uh, which he finds to be similar to some documents. You just turned my mind into shit. <laughs> multiverse um, <laughs> he finds to be similar to some documented in the X-Files he concludes that because five murders occurred during the earlier sprees the investigator should expect two more he's got his finger on the pulse he's so good he, he really is so because uh, Scully believes that the killer will return to the scenes of his earlier crimes just cause uh, she and Moeller wait in the parking garage of the office building there they catch a man named Eugene Victor Toombs dude this guy is so good at playing a creep he's always yeah. sweaty I think like, he, he's just that's how he showed up. Yeah, you think? They that? just put like the the They didn't even dress him. He, he showed he showed up in that outfit. Dude, he just like he client like here, here's what I expect. A van tears around the corner and they kick him out. Yeah. He just oh, and he's like and he just stands there with his face with his weird lip thing. And he just yeah. stands up, yeah. Doesn't dress doesn't brush himself off and then just walks over in these weird trousers. Yeah, like you read the script, he's like <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a total um, Willem Dafoe, Shadow of the Vampire kind of situation. Right? Oh, gorgeous. Yep, 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 yep. Um, so they, he, they find him climbing through the air vents. Yeah. So good. So Toombs is given a polygraph test, which includes questions written by Mulder uh, linking him to murders dating back as far as 1903. Toombs passes most of the test, but crucially fails Mulder's questions placing Toombs at the historical murders. No. Yeah. However, Colton dismisses Mulder's queries and lets Toombs go. Dude. You know? To prove his assertion to uh, Scully, Mulder digitally elongates and narrows Toombs' fingerprints. And he's like, boom. Yeah. You dumb bitch. Yeah. Showing... <laughs> <laughs> Showing that they match the prints at the crime scene. Mulder believes that Toombs is able to stretch and squeeze his body through narrow spaces. And she's, yeah, once again... 
folder, folder. The human body Bobby. cannot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that night, Toombs demonstrates this by squeezing down a chimney to claim another victim. Dude, this scene is ridiculous too because mm-hmm. they show his hand. Yeah. Scre- it's, and it's like early computer effects. Mm-hmm. And like, it, it looks goofy now, but at the time, we were just like. Yeah, we're like, oh my god, this oh my guy god. This real. is doing it. It's real. Yeah. He should play Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> That's two. Uh, Mulder and Scully find no documentation on Toom's uh, life at all. They visit retired detective Frank Briggs, who recounts his experiences of the investigation into the 1933 mur- murders. Yeah, he's like, that was a stretchy fuck, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Briggs brings out old photographs of Tombs, who has not aged in 60 years. He hasn't aged today. Uh, <laughs> and gives them the address of Tombs' former apartment building. There, Mulder and Scully find a nest. This is so cool. And it's, it's uh, constructed out of uh, newspaper and bile in the oh. building's crawl space, as well as several trophy items taken from past victims. Mulder suspects that Tombs is a mutant who can hibernate for 30 years at a time after consuming five human livers, mm-hmm. not six, not four, five, as the two leave, Tombs, who is hiding in the rafters, stealthily takes the necklace Scully is wearing as a new trophy. He's like, yeah, it's it's creepy, dude. That whole idea of him like hibernating in the in like in newspaper. It's, yeah, well, it's uh, so the thing weird. too. The thing too, like you look at him and the way they kind of like yellow his skin a little bit. Yeah, you're like that guy produces bile. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. and and then because it's the same color, and then like whenever he's like on the hunt, his eyes change to that yeah. yellow, and it's like yeah. ugh. So Mulder and Scully put the apartment under surveillance, but Colton has them taken off the job for some reason. Mulder finds Scully's necklace in Toom's apartment and tries to call his partner, but her phone line has been cut. This is a creepy fucking scene. Toom's breaks into her apartment through a tiny air vent to kill her. He's like, as soon as he like unscrews, like yeah. it's so yeah. silly, um, but scary. Uh, but Mulder rushes there and apprehends him first. Toombs is put in an institution for the criminally insane, where he begins to build another uh, nest using newspaper. He's like, he's just like very slowly just licking it, throws it in the corner, licks it, throws it in the corner. It's so creepy. Uh, at the institution, Scully informs Mulder that medical tests on Toombs show an abnormal skeletal and muscle system. And a rapidly declining no shit. and a rapidly declining metabolism. When Toombs is given food through a slot in the door, he stares at the thin slots and grins. He's like, I'm gonna get through this slot. Yeah. Yeah. Which he tries to because he's in another episode called well, Toombs. Yeah, but it, yeah, but that that one he like needs like thirty livers, I think it was. Well, you know, they gotta upgrade. Yeah. But it's like for some like bigger yeah. Because this isn't even his final form. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Great episode and like it's like something very. I like the whole like the whole creepy thing of like he's a monster, but he's a human monster. Yeah, he's kind of got that parallel with like serial killers. Yeah. Like they we look like everybody else. Yeah. Um, but then like the whole like oh he comes a lot he comes back every thirty years and it's almost like an yeah. it kind of thing where it's like yeah. oh he has this ability but he's just a human. Yeah. So he has this ability to hibernate and he builds these cocoons out of newspaper. It's so and he weird. like figured it out early. Like so yeah like but he uses the newspaper now so but he figured it out you know. Material. But how did he figure it out? Is he one of a kind? Like how would he? How did he know? Oh I need to hibernate. Or is he like the last of like a. An off, an offshoot of the human family tree that could yeah. do this. Yeah, probably it makes me feel sick. Yeah, well, it was. It's disgusting. Yeah, the whole episode was disgusting. Like, it's just, it's so good though. And that dude is a creep. Yeah. Yep. 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 And he crushes uh, it, and it, it's, yeah. it's and all the better for it. Yeah, because he's not acting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he is, but he's also like he has the edge, whereas like how, uh, you know. Uh, Tom Cruise like plays people that might be human. Tom Cruise might be human. He's not human, right? But he might be. He that's used the to thing. be. Yeah. Okay. So like that's why he's good at it. All right. So my last episode for this evening is um, before tongue in cheek uh, with like uh, reality shows became a big thing. Mm-hmm. They were the first to do it. Um, <laughs> the show Cops explodes onto the scene in the <laughs> early nineties. <90s. laughs> yeah. That much. It was a phenomenon, just as X Files was. So know? that was their night that they did Cops and America's Most Wanted. Those were paired together. Sure. Just like X Files and Sightings were paired yeah. together. Yeah. So Cops and yeah. yeah. So it was season seven, episode twelve. So this is two thousand. They were like, mm-hmm. we got to do this. Yeah, yeah. It's called X Cops. Yeah. That's the name of the episode. <laughs> and. 
Um, it's a fun episode. It's so fun, and the the reason I picked it is because one, they do it found footage style the whole time, right? Mm-hmm. It's an episode of Cops. They start you with the same like cops just filmed on the, the yeah. you know they do the, that opening, <gasps> the opening, bah, bah, they yeah. do that whole opening, and so there's a monster on the tear, and they yeah. start with like the two cops talking to the back, yeah. like you know we're on the beat, we're doing this, and um, so. Uh, the episode begins with the opening of Cops before cutting to uh, Keith Wetzel, a deputy with the Los, Ange- Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Uh, he and the Cops film crew are at Willow Park, California, a fictional high-crime district of Los Angeles. Wetzel visits the home of Mrs. Guerrero, who has reported a monster in the neighborhood. Wetzel, expecting to find a dog, follows a creature on the corner but runs back screaming for the crew to flee. They return to Wetzel's police car, but before they can escape, it is overturned by an unseen entity. Mm-hmm. When backup arrives on the scene, an injured Wetzel claims that he encountered uh, gang members. The police soon discover and surround Fox Mulder and Dana Scully, believing them to be criminals, before they, uh, are, before they realize that they are a pair of FBI agents. Mulder and Scully claim that they are investigating an alleged werewolf that killed a man in the area during the last full moon. Uh, according to Mulder, the entity that they are tracking only comes out at night. Scully is irritated by the constant presence of the cops crew, but Mulder is enthused at the uh, prospect of a paranormal proof being presented to a national televised audience. The agents on the police interview Miss Guerrero, who describes the monster to Ricky as a sketch artist. Uh, to Mulder's surprise, Miss Guerrero describes not a werewolf, but the horror movie vill- villain Freddy Krueger. And it's funny at that point, they're like, ah, uh, oh, man, he dies at every movie, but he still comes back. Uh, Ricky expresses a fear of being alone in a dangerous neighborhood and is found short time later with serious slashes to his chest. Mulder and Scully find a pink fingernail at the scene. The group also meets Steve and Eddie. Uh, a couple who witnessed the incident but did not see Ricky's attacker, saying that it appeared he was being attacked by nothing. Scully shows that the couple, uh, or Scully shows the couple the fingernail, which is identi- uh, which they identify as belonging to Shantara Gomez, a prostitute. When the agents track down Shantara, though, uh, whose face is pixelated, she claims that her pimp attacked Ricky and fears that they will kill her. She pleads with the agents for protection. Mulder and Scully have Wetzel guard Cantera while they assist the police in the raid of a crack house. The two are drawn back outside when Wetzel encounters the entity, wildly shooting at it. Inside a police car, the agents find Shantara with her neck broken. When Mulder questions Wetzel, he admits that he thought he saw the Wasp Man, a monster his older brother told him about when he was a kid. Though other deputies express skepticism, an officer finds flattened bullets, indicating they physically impacted something, uh, though no trace is found of what they struck. Mulder formulates a theory that the entity changes its form to correspond with its victim's worst fears. Wetzel, Ricky, and Cantera all express fear shortly before their run-ins with the entity. It was visible to them, but not the others. The agents think that Steve and Edie might be the entity's next targets because they were in the vicinity of Ricky's attack. Uh, they head to their house, only to find the couple in the middle of, the, of an argument. It's hilarious. Yeah. He won't make love to me. Uh, after Edie expresses fear of separation <laughs> from Steve, the couple reconciles. Uh, reconciles. Based on this situation, Mulder proposes that the entity ignored Steve and Eddie because uh, they did not exhibit mortal fear. Because they're like, we've been living here so long, no one will force us out of there. Mulder believes that the entity travels from victim to victim like a contagion. It's it's just so cool. At this uh, at his request, Scully performs an autopsy on t- uh, Shantara's body at the morgue. During the procedure, a conversation between Scully and the coroner's assistant causes the latter to panic about a uh, a uh, hantavirus outbreak. Mm. The entity suddenly kills her with a disease. When Mulder discusses the death of t- with Scully, he realizes that Wetzel is in the da- is in danger of being revisited by the entity. The agents and police return to the crack house where the entity has trapped an injured Wetzel in an upstairs room. The agents are unable to enter the room until dawn comes when the entity disappears and spares Wetzel's life. 
After the incident is over, Scully expresses her sympathies to Mulder that being filmed by a national television crew did not provide the public exposure to the paranormal phenomena that he had hoped. Mulder remains hopeful. Nothing that it all comes down to how the production crew edits and puts the footage together. So it was uh, tongue in cheek about how Fox, you know, does their shows and everything and make things entertaining. But there's certain points in that episode. Oh no, it's hysterical. Yeah, like so when they finally like at first, you know, Mulder's kind of all about and he's talking about the werewolf and and and, and Scully's like Mulder, what are you doing this and that? And he like, he's like kind of going with him. He's like, no, they need to see this. They need to hear about this werewolf and everyone's kind of laughing. But then it cuts to the clip after like the first back for the commercial, and, and the there it's in the back of their car, mm-hmm. and you know he's like, yeah, on the job, and he starts doing like the how they do, it, and she's like kind of responding the same right. way, like, yep, you know, like doing it. It's so good, and it's cool no, yeah. too, because like all the way it's shot, it's so. Oh cool. no, it's it's, it's, yeah, it's super it, fun. I remember I remember seeing that the first time. I was like, this is this is really cool because like it's so self aware. And it's so yeah. like you know of the time because yep. cops was so big. Yeah, it's it's good stuff. I, I really like that episode because it also was like it was a breather too. Because like yeah. I want to say what I I'm, I'm, I'm I it was I 2000, so it was heavy into the final arc. Yes, yes. Like Doggett was already there and all this stuff. Yeah, no, it, it yeah. So it was a good breather because like yeah. they were getting very heavy with like you know the X Files, you know myth- mythos if you want to call it. So yeah, no, good, good pick, good pick, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, for my last pick, this is my favorite episode of the X Files. My absolute favorite. Uh, season two, episode two, the host. Holy shit! One of first of all, I don't think they recaptured the monster e ish ness, no, no. whatever you want to call it, of the monster in this episode. This I feel like the creature in this one, yeah. the the design and yeah. the makeup artist, I think they it was like they mistakenly fell into how good it was. Uh, sure, cuz the layers of the mouth, if you still look. Yeah, you can see the guy. The yep. back layer though, mm-hmm. but it still looks good. Mm-hmm. And the layers the way they did it, mm-hmm. it's it was like that I th- was one of those things, you know, or just truly inspired. It's just it's it's really good and um and the story itself is so tight. Yeah. Um, so, dude, so let, let's let's get into it because this literally is my favorite episode. So, we it opens up with this Russian freighter uh, off the coast of New Jersey. So right off the bat, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it's not the Bigfoot episode, yeah, yeah. yeah. or the Jersey Devil, because yeah. that episode was shameful. I remember yeah. why. Well, is that, that's in season one. That is season one. Yeah, and that's like episode four or something. Yeah. And I remember watching that. I was like, not my Jersey Devil. <laughs> It's like, where's the monster? They took her germ! I'm sorry. So bad. Yeah. So, start off, uh, New Jersey, with where I'm from. Um, a crewman, uh, so I'm trying to sh- <laughs> fix the ship's toilets, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And you got all this, you know, uh, Dimitri and Yvonne yeah. going back and forth, whatever the fuck. And, you know, there's all this shitty water, and it's just like, oh, God. And um, he's trying to eat, you know, he's um, fixing the toilet, and he gets pulled into the septic system, right? Um, and the guys are like, flush, flush the tags, flush the tags. Um, and so presumably you're like, all right, so whatever was in there got flushed out into the New Jersey ocean. Yep. First of all, I want to say as, as, as a native New Jerseyan, stop saying that our fucking state is dirty. It's only North Jersey. North Jersey is disgusting. What? What? You're not a Jersey native anymore. I'm, I will always be a Jersey native. I moved. I'm. An, I'm. I'm a, at this point, I'm almost a naturalized Pennsylvanian, but I'll always be a native New Jersey. Okay. It's just. It's just terminology. Oh, but don't say we anymore, though. What do you mean we? I'm telling you when I was watching it. Oh, okay. Sorry. You know what I'm saying? So, don't be a jerk. I'm a. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> I just give back what's dealt this way. I'm, I'm just saying, trying to keep no, the I'm same. Not, when I say to you, I'm not saying to you. I'm saying people like to say that. New, it's dude. It's 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 as tale as old as time. I wasn't talking about that. I'm talking about. I'm just saying. What? You're one of us. Now. Oh, I know. And I'm just That's talking. All? When I watched as okay. a kid, okay, it would always get me. It was like, stop saying New Jersey is dirty. North Jersey is gross. Central and most of South, pretty nice, man. It's some of the nicest areas. Anyway, it was just it was just perpetuating this myth that Jersey is this disgusting, dirty sure. place that produces sure. fluke monsters. Sure. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> So um, it's New York propaganda. That's it, what it, it, really yeah. it, it really is. It really is. No, it really is. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, it's the New York families think that the New Jersey families. No, one hundred percent. I'm not even. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm. I don't care what Johnny Sack says. I'm literally with you. I'm saying it's New York yep. propaganda. <laughs> we could win this thing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not explaining that. Yeah. Uh, so a couple days later, his, the half-eaten body appears in the sewers of Newark, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, Mulder is assigned the case and visits uh, with the detective, um, and then he shows being shown the body, and he gets pissed because he thinks uh, Skinner's just giving him these bullshit assignments now. Now that he's been trying to like blow the whole thing open, so this one is great because it's like it's a monster feature, but it, it, it has quite a few ties into the um, the mythos stuff, right? Um, so. Um, he walks in on Skinner, which it's like, oh, you sure you want to do this, pal? Because, you know, Skinner's like eight feet tall, like lightning bolts are coming yeah. out of his eyes, like he's fucking Can crazy. You stop? What? Lightning bolts are coming out of Skinner's eyes? Sorry. <laughs> he's the man. I know, but like, stop with the shocker shit. <laughs> stop trying. That was the one takeaway that I got throughout rewatching it again. How much that Skinner is the unsung hero of that show? Oh yeah, I mean because they turn it Skinner. around. They turn it around later. You find out he was protecting Mulder, and yeah. then like, uh, don't don't they kill? Him? I forget. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I gotta go back. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's been, um, like I said, it's been yeah. it's been ten years. Right. So he's pissed. He's going off this wild goose chase. He's like I'm tired of your blah, 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 blah. this hullabaloo. And then like he walks in. There's like a whole table full of people in there. They're like, uh, why don't you come in here, uh, Agent Mulder? Tell us how we're wasting our time. Yeah. And like he's like. <sighs> Why are you gonna do me like that, Walt? Yeah. And uh, Walter Skinner. Um, so whatever, he sends him back out, and he's like, okay, you know, whatever. He's like, oh, the ice finals are closed. <laughs> you know, does the whole thing. Um, <laughs> so that night, Mulder is talking to Scully. Late at night. He's like, yeah, what up, girl? What you wearing? Yep, yeah, the lights coming through the blinds. <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah, what that? What that? What that skin do? What, what yeah, up, he's like, I- I'm gonna leave the FBI. She's like, Mulder. <laughs> She's like, the FBI doesn't exist. She goes half limp. <laughs> Mulder. Yeah. <laughs> Horace Pinker doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> all Sorry. right. No, it's all right. Scully yeah. performs an autopsy on the crewman's body, which is actually pretty fucking cool, because they have, like, those guts look pretty fucking real. That was ballsy. They wouldn't do that on TV now. Like, it's... No. Like, I would be surprised if those are molds from, like, an actual corpse or some they shit. They actually like, pulled a... That was a real body. It was a real body. Yeah. They were like... It was, it was Fox in the uh, 90s. Yeah, yeah. All right. That was the alien autopsy. That was the actual. Don't, don't. You're gonna break. <laughs> you're gonna break my heart. Please stop. <laughs> uh, she performs this autopsy, and then she finds, you know, she's got the Russian. He's got the Russian Cyrillic tattoo on his arm. She's like, hmm. And so she takes a picture, and then all of a sudden she sees movement in the organs, mm. and the little thing pokes it. She grabs it, and, she, and she's like, oh, what the hell is this? And she pulls a fluke worm out of his mm-hmm. his liver. It's pretty fucking gross. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, cut to, we're in Newark. Yeah, we are. In the sewer. Because, yeah. you know, New Jersey's disgusting. Yeah, it's all sewers. New yeah. York is, or Jersey is all yeah. a sewer. Yeah, apparently. I mean, North Jersey is. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, a city worker um, gets pulled underwater again. He thinks it's a python, right? And then um, he's, he's in the doctor's office. This is great. He has this nasty, like, so he gets bit. He's like, oh, I think it was a python. Pretty sure it was right? a python, right? right? And then they show the bite on his back. It's like it's got like the the it almost looks like a compass rose, yeah. like on his back. Yeah, yeah. and it was the, like the two like weird like yeah. dull teeth, yeah, <laughs> that yeah. like apparently lock in and gum, the two sloth teeth from Goonies. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's all good. Um, so she's examining his back. She's like, "You're gonna be fine." Um, Just some hobo from Jersey bit you. That's what yeah, that that's, yeah, those Jersey hobos. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, so then, she sh- uh, Mulder, and then so so Scully shows him um, Mulder. She's like, "Oh, look what I pulled out of the body!" And like, she's got a jar. She's got the fluke in the jar, mm-hmm. and it's got. It, for some reason, they put it in shit water because this mm-hmm. whole episode is just shit water. It needs to exist in shit water. Yeah, yeah, everything is. It's dead. Yeah, shit water from top to bottom. So even the body. No, if it's not in shit water, it'll disintegrate. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Jersey. All right. So and then she finds <laughs> out that the the um, yeah exactly disgusting. Yeah. Uh, so. The, the bite wound on his back matches the bite wound of the fluke worm. So they're like, Ugh. Right? So <laughs> so that night, they cut to the dude um, the dude uh, who got bit. He's in the shower, like, Ugh. And then he's brushing his teeth. He squirts a whole tube of toothpaste into his mouth to get this, this taste out of his mouth. He's like, mm-hmm. oh. Crying in the shower mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Wait, that's a different... Big Red, a whole pack of Big Red. Plunger on the face. I know. I know. 
Is that goes on. I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> so, and then he's like, oh god, he's like, he's sitting in the water, and like you see him start to like puke or whatever, and he pukes up one of these fucking fluke worms, and he dies in the shower. Yeah, that's what would happen. I would die if that happened to me. I would. Yeah. Yes, you would. Yep. So then, this is the funniest thing. Um, then they cut to Mulder visits the sewage plant again. And then they're just like, hey, uh, we caught this thing. And they catch it. The fluke man. And he's just like, oh, they have him locked up. He's like, oh, yeah. like, it has no sex organs. I'm like, dude, dude, the government would be here for this. Yeah. Well, I love that. Like, look, it has no sex organs. And Mulder's like, because I tried to fuck it. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I tried to bat it stuff and around. It fell off. And there was nothing there. No, he did, and it fell off. It fell off. Yeah. He's like, now it has no sex. Yeah. <laughs> he's a savage. You can't, you know, you can't. Mulder could do whatever. I wouldn't care. They could say that Mulder did whatever. He had I'm a like, cell phone with an actual antenna he had to pull out. Remember those? Yeah. Yeah, I had one. Yeah. Four AA batteries. Ugh. Yeah, you like that? My kids don't believe me. They're like, shut up, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, yeah, whatever. And you're like Gandalf. They're like, oh, and then you had your wizard staff and... Uh, you had to use magic to that would that would that would mean that they actually enjoyed like Lord of the Rings and actually knew what the fuck I just it meant was. like the, 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 it's like they they hear that and they're like Ugh, wizardry oh the Iraqi battery uh, <laughs> it's the same thing. interesting it's the same thing all right shut up uh, tell us more about Shocker you fuck okay. Skinner's coming up. No, don't. Um, <laughs> so don't. back at Quantico, someone slips a newspaper article under Scully's desk. Uh, and en enabling her to identify the original body. Uh, Mulder and Scully meet at the processing plant and observe the fluke man. Uh, going forward, he is the fluke man. Yeah. Uh, Skinner wants to prosecute the creature, but he decides to electrocute... I'm sorry. And subject it to a psychiatric evaluation with electricity. Wait, I'm sorry. This is the last episode of Other Dangerous Podcast. <laughs> I... Roll back. Okay, so Skinner wants to uh, prosecute the creature and subject it to a psychiatric evaluation, which is kind of weird because you think they want to like examine it. Forget its mind. Yeah. This thing would be locked up so fast. You think, though, but here's the kind of guy Skinner is. You, you think Skinner sees it, right? Yeah. With its like translucent, almost white skin on yeah. its face. Mm -hmm. He doesn't see a monster. Mm -hmm. He just sees some f asshole. Yeah. He's like, hey, asshole. Yeah. You're going to pay for what you <laughs> it did. Ju it just, it, it, but it's funny because they, they use this as, a, as an inroad for like Skinner. He, and he goes to Mulder. He's like, this would have been a great X file if they were still open. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's shocking, truly. Yeah. So Mulder insists that the death could I be. I fucking hate you. I love you. Mulder insists that the death could have been prevented if the X files had remained open. But Skinner implies that the decision came from higher up the chain of command. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I hope the smoking man is, is in this one. I hope so, too. Yeah. He is. He's in the background. Yeah. That night, while the unrestrained fluke man is being transported by a van, this is so great. Unrestrained, some dude just in an ambulance. Oh, we're just taking him on a road trip. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> transported by It kills the driver, who is the dumbest guy ever. Mm -hmm. D Mr. Stash gets out, gets his thing, doesn't see it in the back. I don't see it. Guess I better climb in. Yeah. Then they cut to far shot, and then they show the fluke creature crawling into the closest porta potty. Yeah. Gross. To get back into its shit. Poopies. It loves poopies. It loves poopies. Yeah. Yep. So um, it hides in the porta potty, and then, dude, fucking, the dude shows up with like the um, uh, with the the porta potty uh, cleaning thing, and he's like trying to suck the. Do this hard motherfucker. He looks like uh, Terry Funk from the WWF in the 90s. Terry it's awesome. Funk. Hell yeah. He looks just yeah, like him. Yeah. He got the cigarette. He got the shitty gloves on, but he's smoking the cigarette, touching it to his face. Yeah. This episode is all about poop. It's kind of weird. Right? So then he's like, he's sucking the stuff out of the, yeah. the, 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 the thunder box, and then it gets stuck, and he's like, what the fuck? He kicks yeah, it. He's like, oh, that's a hefty turn. I yep. gotta go in. Yep, yep. I gotta suck it. it out myself. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, brought back to the uh, processing yeah. plant where it goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he gets a call um, that, hey, uh, 
it's back at the processing plant. It, it's it's random as hell, but you could see if you watch the episode, they're kind of just they're trying to reopen the X Files, and then they also re then they introduce because at this point, Deep Throat's dead, so they have to. Um, uh, Mr. X is the new guy. Yeah. Uh, what's that actor's name? He's in a ton of movies. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jason Goes to Hell. Stephen yeah. Williams. Stephen Williams, yep. He plays Creighton Duke in Jason Goes to Hell. Real quick, it's it's nuts. I know it's a dumb show, yep. but they followed and they took everything the X-Files and they continue with Supernatural. Yeah. I know. He's in it. Yeah. He's in it. Stephen Williams. Mitch Pelegi's in it. He mm -hmm. plays their grandfather. Mm -hmm. uh, and they do the Creature Feature of the Week, which mm -hmm. actually become fun episodes. But yes, yes, Stephen Williams. Stephen Williams, who plays uh, X, he, he's not around for that long, but um, he gets a call from him. He says, you're a friend at the FBI, Agent Mulder. And he just hangs it up. Yeah. He's like, I want you to think about a donut. And a little girl and a, and a hot dog. Sorry, Jason goes to hell. It's the it's it's Duke. Yeah, Duke. Creighton Duke. Yeah. yeah. Jason's face looks like a blueberry pie. In that movie we're talking about? Yeah, the mask and the cr it looks like there's crust and looks like the yeah. center thing is a. It, it, I and love it and I hate that. Ladies movie. and gentlemen, what's the matter? Jason has officially derailed. Yeah. What are we talking about? But, at the no, top? No, but, but no, here's the thing. No, no, but here's the deal. Like you are in such a state of like. Yeah. Of like, you're. It's normal. This is. This is. It's. It's different. It's not like you. Like we usually. I'm in flow state. What do you I want know, understand, there? but we usually when one of us get there, yeah. you're the one who's yeah. like, like you're like, you're freaking me out at how normal you Sorry, are. Sorry, I'll go. The, I'll, I'll be a jerk the next episode. How about that? So we'll be normal again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, there it is. I love you. Yep, I, I love you too. Yeah, you better. Be um. So he gets this call. He tells him he's got a friend, and that the X Files must be reopened. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, Scully tells Mulder that the fluke worm she discovered is a larva attempting to reproduce. The fluke man is spotted in a storm drain overflow as Mulder and, and uh, uh, the other dude, um, Charlie, the guy who worked at the plant, the plant, yeah, just some plant, uh, some, some plant jag off, plant jag um, off yeah. pulled underwater by the fluke man. Mulder saves him, apparently killing the fluke man because he slices him in half in the door. Yeah. Which is famously recreated in the first episode of The Mandalorian. Yes. Uh, Favreau said he pulled inspiration from Yeah, he was like, I, yep. he's like, think of that scene, think of X Files. Yeah. They're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Scully concludes her investigation thinking that the creature was brought to the U.S. by a Russian freighter that we saw in the beginning that was hauling salvage material from the Chernobyl disaster. Love it. And that the creature was created in a soup of radioactive sewage. Yeah. Elsewhere, they go back to the sewer. You see the, the fluke man floating there. Yep. And then his eyes open. Yep. Done. Yep. So. So fluke man lives. That's what we oh, get. Oh, yeah. Get. Yeah. Yep. Um, but then later on, um, they, did, uh, they did a comic series. It's not very good, though. Anyway, it's, it's not even worth yeah. mentioning. But, uh,. Yeah, man, that is that is my favorite episode yeah. of The X-Files. It's, gr it it's a great it all. episode. It's a great episode. It has it all. Uh, the creature ha was never, I, in my opinion, was never, there was never a better creature. Yeah, than they, that. Never, they never topped it. No. They never did. And it was like, and I almost feel like, sorry, I almost feel like they, it was probably better that they didn't because it was like, yeah, if no. you went further past this, it would have got a little too out of control. Right. But, you know, honestly, you know for a fact that that creature pushed... You know, Gen Pop to the brink. So that episode. Yeah, yeah. I think it went further past that. It would have got too creaturey, and it would have been dumb like that show, we, Supernatural. Right. <laughs> well, the thing is too, like, so you have to deal with like, you know, a lot of it is who's watching these shows besides the nerds, right? The people that are actually into the lore. It's just like, oh, it's the new show on Fox, so we watch it every night. Mm -hmm. So it, back in you know the 90s, it was gen pop stuff. Yeah. A lot of it's like kind of soccer mommy yeah. kind of people. And they're like, that creature was kind of almost too gross. Who's off the rails? Oh, I am now. Oh, okay. Oh, no. We were off the rails during a segment. Yeah, so... Now, now you know we're not in a segment anymore. Now I can just go off the oh, rails. No, okay. Now, now we're just in in Talkville. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But so that was the thing they kind of pushed it to the point where they're like, we're never gonna go that far with the creature again. And like, no, they 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 they, they dip their toes in the water of 
Mm -hmm. And they got the, and they nailed it. No, it's and great. They nailed it. And I think, uh, and and it's good that it was a, a self-contained episode yes. because if it wasn't, if they were like, oh, there's flu creatures all the time now, they would have, they would have fucked themselves. But yeah. I, I really like the episode because it has that really cool adventure. They they adventure in that filthy place called New Jersey, and then <laughs> and then they. Uh, they go adventuring in the filthy so-called garden state. Uh, uh, <clears throat> anyway. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, I love it. It's got all the good um, the good FBI fun stuff. Yeah. S Skinner is on fire. He he's electric. He's pure yeah. electric in that episode. And I just... <laughs> Look, I love the movie Shocker. I do. Why do you keep bringing it up? <laughs> It's me. It it's, is me. It's me. Ken, it's, it's fine. It's it really, it is. Yeah, there we go. There's my guy. <laughs> but yeah, so... Alright, so this is our first episode of our, our favorite. Uh, we got a little wacky, because, yeah. you know, we're back in the room together. Here's a question for you, though, buddy. Sure. Yeah, let's hear it. If you had to put your money on him, alright? Fox Mulder mm -hmm. versus uh, McCready from The Thing. Stop. It's two different things. No, no, it isn't. It is. Take a little sci-fi away from McCready. Uh, take a little of the real worldishness away from Fox Mulder. Put them, put them both in Antarctica or some shit. Mulder visits the Antarctic. He's there. Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. An immovable object meets a unstoppable force. I think I think McCready would beat the fucking ball. Fist fight. Yeah, yeah, of course. But I mean, I thought we were doing mental acc acclimate. Like we're going because. But why would they be fighting? I'm just saying, let's let's if they came up with a thing where they kind of had to, like I don't know. Let's say McCready knows about the thing, right? He knows about the thing. It's afterwards. Mulder comes up to her. We heard there was some kind of like a, you know situation that occurred up here, and he's like, I don't want to tell anyone about this because if it gets out, it's over. It would literally be one of the gifts of Fox Mulder doing like the head nod, jacket over, and walking away. Because mm. Mac isn't. He's there like, G get off my fucking rock. Like, what are you talking about? Okay, so let's Kurt Russell, Kurt Russell's like that's that's so Kurt Russell wins. That's who's the winner. Anything, okay. Kurt Russell is. I just want to make sure. Yeah, no, no, no. Look, I love. The so you're saying that McCready would have banged Scully first season. Would have taken out like ten seasons to get there. The alien baby was McCready's. Fuck, that's right. Stop, like <laughs> full pause, <laughs> as the kids say. Look, no, look. Fox Mulder, mm -hmm. his tenacity mm -hmm. and his like ability to see through different things and in inquisitive nature—that's yep. what is the full form of the character. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about McCready or Mac, if we're talking about him, yeah. no, that's just that's a force of nature that I'm gonna survive. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's an alien. I don't care what. Mm -hmm. It's cold. I got a flamethrower. Mm -hmm. I'm walking off this motherfucker. Whole different ball game. Right. Plus, it's Kurt Russell, and you know, everyone that is a follower of this uh, hopefully knows at this point. Like, he's Kurt Russell. He's Kurt Russell. Oh yeah, I know. I'm just saying, like those two characters. Yeah. They would just be friends, is what you're saying. They would fight a little bit and then be friends. It would be it would be that mutual understanding. He'd have the like the They'd swisher the, sweet, you know, yeah, cigar yeah. kind of in his mouth, and he'd look at him and be like, "Well, that's your problem." Yeah. And Mulder'd be like, "Jacket over the shoulder, mm -hmm. okay." I don't need to be here. This guy's got it. Yeah. Right. Bottom line. Okay, I like it. I hope so. I like it. Second question. Sure. All right. If you, here's a creative writing project for sure. you. Sure. If you want to take it. All right. So the dude that plays Tombs in that one episode. Yes. Okay. He was in the Green Mile. All right. Which involves many scenes with an electric chair. Yeah. Walter Skinner plays Horace Pinker, who is the shocker, mm -hmm. who was killed by an electric chair. This is the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon or whatever. Yeah. Either seven degrees, or can you write a prequel story to Shocker that starts with the Green Mile and ends with the Shocker? Yeah, I have it right now. Okay, go. So John Coffey. Yeah. He saves the life mm -hmm. of the, uh, was it the governor's wife? Yeah. None of the warden's wife. Warden's wife. Yep. When they were there, like, don't touch all that. Yeah. Tombs is her great, the grandson. Gotcha. So he gives him some ability, but because of so many generations removed, it's like com uh, corrupted now. 
I'm sorry, not tombs. I mean, I'm sorry, shocker. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That is through marriage. Okay. So his ability, when he gets electrocuted, mm -hmm. uh, the force, the magic with the fireflies, Okay. it keeps his spirit alive and makes his ghosts alive when they kill him mm -hmm. because of John Coffey's magic that is passed down. Interesting. I like that that was on the spot that you had that ready to go. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure we'll, we'll we'll circle back to this again because then I'll, I know I know like a couple days from now I'll be like, oh, I forgot about that yeah. episode, or yeah. or I'll be watching it again. I'm like, oh man, I love this episode too. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll come we'll definitely come back to another uh, another one of these. But um, dude, love X Files. Uh, yeah. It's pure '90s nostalgia, <laughs> and um, uh, Jillian Anderson is a goddess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. And. Um, uh, David Duchovny's a goddess. <laughs> or god as well. No, he's awesome. I you know what? David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson were the Vince Clortho and Gatekeep Zool yeah. Yeah. of the 90s. Yes. Yes. Keymaster Gatekeeper. Yes. They made it happen. I just, honestly, I did. I do wish they made better movies. I just wish the movies were better. Yeah, the movies are kind of silly. Uh, I mean, I, we could even we could even go into that and uh, like just talk about just the movies, but there's there's some... So the first one has its moments, but then what's the one with like the werewolves and stuff? It's, I don't even know if there's werewolves. I remember, there I remember, something? No, I remember it was like people being frozen with like another thing, and it just like ends with them like on a boat rowing away. Is that what it was? Yeah, like at the very end, they were just on a boat rowing away. It's kind of weird because, like, as much as I do love the, the X Files, like the movies would come on and like by time it was like half hour in, I'm just like, I don't care. Yeah, in the first movie, they made that joke about like, do you ever change facial expressions? Mm -hmm. That Duchovny was doing on his like talk show tour. Yeah, and he was like, she was like, do you ever change? And he was like, this is my scared face. This is my happy face. You know, they made that joke, and I was like, okay, mm -hmm. it's you know, we've hit, we've hit that point. Mm -hmm. I'll go on record and say the movie Evolution with David Duchovny okay. is better is a oh. better version of uh, the yeah. first X-Files yeah, movie. Kinda, kinda. It's the same thing. Yeah. The worms underground sure. should form. And guess what? One has Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. It's kind of weird that they never had Aykroyd uh, show up for an episode of the X-Files. But maybe he's just a lot. You know, We love him, but maybe like people in the industry are like, don't invite him. I'll start talking about crystal skulls and Fucking pussies. I'm not running down our boy. No, I know. I'm just saying if that's if that's their stance on it. I don't know. I don't know. I love me some X Files, Ken. Yeah, I do too, buddy. I, I'm with you. I am very with you. It it became um, it literally like any kind of show that does this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. This is like this is what it is. It's the you know the monster of the week, or that, or in the overarching story. They they all get it from X Files because X Files was the, was the one. Yeah, no, um, it, it it certainly uh, it certainly started a thing, and it certainly was the uh, you know it was the show, man. And I you know I, I it, it harkens back to the era of uh, when shows were events. Yeah. Now it's just like whatever. Yeah. Here, oh, here's a new show that premiered tonight on Amazon Prime or right. Hulu or whatever. And now it's just like. But back then it was, dude. Friday night, yeah. X Files. Don't bother me. Got to be in front of the TV and, by this time. And that's time. the thing too. Like Mulder and Scully. Like even though we're we're joking around about how much we were like, oh, Scully. No, Scully was awesome. No, no. Like yeah, Scully oh, yeah. kicked ass. Oh, and, she and she had a character arc, man. Yeah. She started. I mean, yes, there were still times in the series where you were like, uh, at this point, I think. This character would. This yeah. character would have made a. She would have. She would have rounded the corner. You know what I'm saying? Right. But. You know. But there's also times too where you were like with Mulder, you were like, yo, chill, everything is in that you know, like, you're like, hold on for one minute. But they they were both written really well and they were acted really well and <sighs> despite some of the reboots, if they make an actual movie, a final like yeah. you know, X Files movie, I hope they do like something really cool with like super supernatural stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's like yeah. I think government it entwined bullshit. I think more culture has to occur, right, to have a show happen. Like I think they like they they scooped it out, man, and they they got all that stuff. I think we need another era to occur, yeah, and then for them to go ahead and like comment on that era, right? And like you know what I mean? Silver Fox, Fox Mulder, like no, yeah. no. Let let Mulder have been the thing, and then give us something new. Oh, like not even like they're mm. just a whole new. No, I mean, let it. And if you want to carry on the X Files thing. 
let it come back as, you know, new people. Okay. They, they, you know, maybe yeah. maybe Mulder dies or Mulder dies in an accident. Like, that's, it's a cold open. Boom. Mulder dies in an accident. New new uh, FBI agents. agents yeah. They feel like, oh, what are these? They dust off this du- this yeah. dusty filing cabinet, and then they look at it. It says X-Files. They're like, yeah. what are these? And there's a Boom. poster on the wall that says, I want to believe. Yeah. And it turns out it's this office. And then, no, and then, but sh- no one's related to them. It's not no. their daughter. No. no it's no, no, not no. their cousin. No. They're just that's ca- how it yep, works. They're just, yep. And then, and then carved on the side of the, um, of the filing cabinet is Scully is hot because she is yeah right yeah you can totally. make all the you can make all the accusations I'm a creep for Aunt Jillian Anderson I, yeah, I am all good buddy yep even when she's on that weird like Queen the Crown show she's supposed to be like 80 years old and Mike's still hot yeah you're like whoa Scully's <laughs> you're like you just refer to as Scully still you're like yeah <laughs> you're like Scully's still doing it yep well alright guys <laughs> <laughs> this, this is me. We're back in the same room again. We're you know we're, we're we're up and down. We're back. We're left, right, forward. Everything. We're we're going nuts. We're up, here. up, down, down, left, left right. right. Yeah, yeah, we're, easy. <laughs> we're the blood cut. We're yes. the blood cut. Uh, so, um, thank you for listening to other dangerous podcast. Mm-hmm. We're 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 here. We're gonna keep going. We are the new X Files. Are we? That asshole that hated on comedian. Oh. We're, we're X Files now. Like um, after him, you like, know what? He's one of the lone gunmen. Yeah, right. And we're gonna be like, you know what? And then we're gonna find. Oh wait, they're a crew. And that's like, all right, you're yeah. just trying to help. Yeah. He's like, you need to look further into this. Yeah. So those three assholes that yeah. are. Yeah. Anyway, from now on, <laughs> that guy has pushed me to the point where like I'm like, we are. This is what we are, but we're just gonna get so much wrong. And yeah, it's yeah, gonna be so, yeah. It's gonna be great. Are we getting it wrong, or are these the actual facts? It's for him to find out yeah. and come back. Mm-hmm. But guys, for this episode of Other Dangerous Podcast, I'm Ken James, and I'm Jason McKittrick. And as always, have a spooky evening. Spooky. Julian Anderson's house. Thank you for listening to Other Dangerous Podcasts. Have you encountered the other dangers? If so, you can email us at otherdangerouspodcast at gmail.com. And if you'd like to have a discussion about the paranormal, you can find us at Other Dangerous Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. There you can find submitted pictures, videos, and artwork from listeners. We are now streaming on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else podcasts are streamed. And after listening, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so we can continue to bring you the other dangers.